y'all welcome back to movie madness marathon we are on episode three officially of the outlaw story guys we have made it 72 hours you guys and we are excited guys we are officially 27 days from the release of the movie so today's episode is gonna be my favorite we're not even gonna waste no more time let's get into it let's go in 2023, I identified as a rapper. Cut the chatter, it's not a factor who coming after. I plan to be the last one standing total disaster. Cause everybody don't go up. It's like the rapture. See, you trying to be ahead of the game. You moving backwards. I told you that it's levels of this. Climb the ladder. I'm bringing niggas down to the atoms. It never matter. Hey guys, so again, welcome to episode three, guys. We're hopping straight into the outlaw story, guys. We've already watched the trailer. We've already talked about how it started with dreams and reality. If you haven't seen those two videos, pause what you're doing. Pause this video and jump backwards and go watch the other two. So we are in Montana now, right? We there. And uh, you know, your girl gets her rental car, find my Airbnb, I go do a little grocery shopping. You know, one of the people in the grocery store actually told me I was a little too happy. And I was like, ma'am, you don't understand. Like I'm here on an internship for a movie set. Like, yeah, I'm real happy, right? So anywho, we, um, I get a call so, I got my role as a cash driver for the set. I was a cash driver intern. At least I get to be in the car with the celebrity and stuff like that. So I'm gonna talk to him. And then the producer told me, he was like, yeah, you're gonna be a cash driver or whatever. Just make sure you don't talk to the cast. And I was like, dang, like I can't even say good morning, hello. Like I'm still gonna say it anyway. So yeah, guys, I, I arrive in Montana, I get my car, I get my place. Um, I finally get in contact with my uh, manager. Um, I believe his name was Steve. Yeah, it was Steve Prince. Um, so he was the manager over all the transportation of the film. So um, basically, he called me and was like, listen, tomorrow, um, you know, we're gonna go and drive up to the first set, you know, have a look around just so you know where you're going because you're gonna be picking up the different cast people and I want you to know where you're going and all the rest of that. And I was like, okay, cool, like, boom, let's do it. So guys, go to sleep. Of course, I barely slept because I was so excited. Woke up the next day, um, got dressed, was there bright and early, drove to the set, guys. And I mean, when I tell you, we stopped at a, like, a little plaza, right, where they had, like, a little, um, it's not food line, it was something else. It was, like, Alberts or something. So, we're there, we meet there so that another one of the transportation people could ride with me. So she was gonna ride with me to tell me where I was going, kind of see where my head was at and the rest of that. So I was like, okay, cool, the more, the, you know, the better. Cause listen, driving in Virginia versus driving in Montana, two different things. One speed limit is 65, one is 80. So yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, your girl was a little nervous, but you know what I'm saying? I gripped the wheel, tip it two, and we kept it pushing. Anyways, guys, we get in the car and uh, we're driving and she's talking to me and kind of saying like, oh, hey, you're an intern, that's dope. Stuff like that, I'm kind of telling what I want to do. I was like, yeah, I want to be a screenwriter and director. Like, you know, this is exciting. Like, I'm finally here working on the film. Like, this is my big one. We're driving through these mountain guys. And when I tell you, when you get a new laptop, and you know when you have that screensaver that's just like nature, different areas of nature. Y'all, when we were driving to set, it looked exactly like that screensaver that you get. <laughs> Like when you buy that new computer like it was no joke I mean I was I mean of course I'm focusing on the road but it's hard because I'm looking around like what like God did his big one y'all hear me like Drake Tomo big as the what no 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 God did his real big one with that state okay we get there we're driving onto this lady's ranch and mind you when people own land like in Montana like they almost own the mountain because like their houses are built up on those hills. So we're driving up this hill and like there's like, of course there's the cattle in there, these, these big like tractor machines and stuff, it was insane. We get up there, we're driving up the hills and I see like a bunch of big trailers outside. Um, one was a, a bathroom trailer, another one was for costuming, another one was like the stars trailer and then another one, it was this one silver trailer. And that, y'all, that silver trailer is gonna be my story, you hear me? Okay, there was this one silver trailer off in front of me. And that is where the director, the producers, and the second assistant directors were having their meeting for the film. So I arrive, I park, I shake hands with some people. I met one of the, um, 
the somebody who was on crew, she was basically like the nurse, making sure everybody like, you know, was getting tested because COVID was still around doing her thing. So we had to get swabbed and all that kind of stuff. So she was just kind of telling me she was going to school and like they had emailed her about the position and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, well, that's really cool or whatever. So me and her became friends. We we're just chatting. So the woman that I was in the car with, I believe her name was Elizabeth, if I'm not mistaken. It was Elizabeth, I want to say. So we were in the car together. And we go outside, and guys, the Montana wind, like, I got outside, and I'm wearing like a, I'm going to drop a picture of it somewhere up here, but I'm wearing like this red Columbia jacket, some black workout leggings, and these Columbia boots, right? Thinking like, oh yeah, like, you know, I should be straight. Oh no, I needed like two coats. It was freezing. Like, so the wind was blowing and it was hitting my eyes and my eyes were just watering so bad. I was like, oh my gosh, like, <laughs> I'm literally crying out here. Like, my eyes were just watering. I was literally wiping tears on my eyes. The woman I was in the car with, again, I believe her name was Elizabeth. Forgive me if it was not. Um, but she was like, listen, we're just standing out there talking. And she's like, listen, it's freezing. Like, let's get in the car. And um, my friend Colin had told me he had shook hands with the director. And I was like, well, where is he? And he's like, oh, he's in that silver trailer, mind you guys. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to I'm gonna shake his hand. I want to know whatever, like, whatever he got going on. So um, he was like, okay, well, yeah, totally. Like, he's really cool. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's, like, so excited for everybody to be here and stuff. So I'm like, what kind of director is so excited for, like, people that are, like, under him to be here? Like, you know, you usually hear, like, the horror stories of the directors. Like, oh, he was so mean and they were firing people off set, this and that. But, like, the way he was talking about Mario was like, Oh yeah, like he's dope. Like we, we we shook hands. We're gonna have a drink later, type thing, whatever. So I'm like, okay, cool. I gotta shake this guy's hand. So um, I'm standing in front of the silver trailer, waiting for the meeting to end. And let me tell y'all, when I mean standing on business, when I said that earlier, when I tell you your girl was standing on business, waiting, okay, waiting for that director to come out the trailer. I was like, I don't care how long I gotta stand. I don't care if this meeting is two hours. I will sit in the car and the minute I see that door open, I will hop out, okay? And I will be over there, okay? I gotta shake this man's hand. I gotta meet him, cause like this is, this is my first set. I feel like I show my face. Even though I'm an intern and I'm like the bottom of the barrel, I don't care, I'm doing it. Um, the girls, the, so the woman's still coming to me. She's like, Crystal's freezing out here. Like, let's go get in the car. Like, let's, it's heat in there, whatever. And I'm like, nah, like, I don't want to get in the car. I want to stand right here because I want to shake this director's hand. Like, I, I can't get in the car. I'm sorry. So I just threw her my keys and I was like, listen, you hop in the car, cut the heat on, do what you got to do. But your girl is staying, standing on business right here, okay? I gave you the keys, so you bring it right. So she was like, okay, like, I'll hop in the car and whenever you're done, whatever. So me and the, the nurse are still talking. Guys, the door opens, and it was like the door to destiny had just opened for me the minute that silver that silver trailer door opened, okay? So these very important, scary producers and other people walk out, and I'm like, ooh, like, okay, Crystal, pull it together. We got this, right? So <laughs> they walk out, and basically... He has on, Mario Van Peebles has on like this leather black jacket and this cowboy hat. And he's like, everybody's like looking, and I'm standing like right smack in the middle of the trailer. So there was, you couldn't miss me. I'm in red, I'm just standing out, right? So he walks out down the stairs of the trailer and he looks at me and I look at him like, whoo, right? And he's like, I've never seen you. And I'm like, I've seen you though? And it's a pleasure to meet you. Like, what? I just wanted to shake your hand, kind of let you know, hey, I'm the cash driver intern, you know, really excited to be here or whatever. So he's like, oh, okay, well, so he's shaking my hand. He's like, Mario. And I'm like, I'm Crystal, whatever. So like, y'all, when I tell you my grip was so tight, I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I got to loosen up a bit. I don't want this man to think I'm crazy. Right. So um, he's like, okay, like, okay, Crystal, like, that's dope. So like all of them, I'll mind you guys, it's me. And there's like five other people, Mario's standing right here, and then there's like the producers and the second assistant directors are standing there around me. And they're just looking at me like, and I'm like, oh, okay, that I'm like, our intern's not supposed to do this. Is this the wrong thing? And y'all, he was like, so uh, 
what's like what what, what do you want to do like what's your like what do you want to like what do you want to be what's your goal what's your end game here like why are you here and i was like oh i want i want to be just like you like i want to be a screenwriter i want to be a director i want to tell stories that mean something i want to make films that mean something like that appeal to my audience that they could take home with them they could learn some lesson apply to their life anything like you know what i'm saying that's what i want to do and he was like well you're in the right place like this is it and i'm like oh best believe i know i'm in the right place okay because jesus already told me i was in the right spot okay so um i was like yeah you know like you know stuff like that so he was like yeah um you ever ridden a horse before? I was like, no, but I'll learn. <laughs> and let me tell y'all something, quick side note, right? Anytime you go somewhere, and I don't care what business it is, whatever it is, if they ask you, do you know how to do something? Always, if you do, even if you don't know, you say no, but I will, I'm willing to learn. Because that phrase right there, no, but I'm willing to learn, yeah, y'all. Yeah, that was the phrase that set your girl up real nice, okay? So I was like, yeah, no, I've never ridden a horse, but, um, you know, I'm willing to learn. He was like, oh, you ever ridden a stagecoach before? I'm like, I don't even know what that is, but you know what? I'll learn. Like, I never did it, but I'll learn, you know. Um, I'm not quite sure what that has to do with driving the cast, but, you know, I'm just, I'm just talking, but I'm still thinking in the back of my head, like, what that got to do with driving the cast? Like, <laughs> why do I need to drive, ride a stagecoach? Like, am I not driving the car my parents just paid a bunch of money for? Like, what's up? So, yeah, he was like, have you ever been a double before? And I was like, no, but again, your girl will learn, right? So he was like, how would you like to be Whoopi Goldberg's stunt double? What? And I was like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> like, y'all, I sat there for a moment, and, and I, when I tell you, I answered quick. But in my brain, we were all sitting in there like, he didn't just ask me that. Like, you know, that, that didn't just happen. Like, that didn't just happen. That's not real. Like, he didn't just say that, right? The V Whoopi Goldberg, like, Whoopi Whoopi Goldberg, right? Yeah. He was like, yeah, how would you like to be Whoopi stun double? I was like, yeah, like, boom, done. <laughs> yeah, don't ask me nothing else. What, when do I start? Like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, when do I start? So he was like, yeah, um, yeah, let's do that. Um, so yeah, change up her schedule. So the next day, because the next day was the day we were actually starting filming. This was, uh, the day I met him was Wednesday. Thursday was the day of official start for filming. So he was like, um, yeah, change up her schedule. You know, she won't be driving any cast tomorrow. She needs to go to costume and hair and makeup so she can get ready to be stumped up. Anyways, he takes one of his, his first assistant director and me, and we go and reenact one of the scenes, guys, which is actually in the trailer. I'm going to post a little clip of it right here. I actually stunt doubled this scene for Whoopi because Whoopi was actually going to only work for one day. So basically, the basis of it was, listen, Bristol, you're going to come in tomorrow. We're going to film these scenes with you in it, and then we're going to show them to Whoopi Goldberg. So, yeah. So Whoopi Goldberg was watching me do the scenes and then doing them for the film. <laughs> like, let me tell y'all something. It was nothing but God. Like, God's favor was just, it was just like God took a heap of favor and just like whoosh on me at <laughs> that moment. And I was just sitting there like, I'm really about to stunt double Whoopi Goldberg tomorrow. He reenacting this scene, guys, and like, he's like, yeah, look at him, like, you don't like him, whatever like that, so I'm laughing. And we had just a good time, and it was just like, Mario Van Peebles, like, again, I told you guys how I thought like directors were like this scary, like, what is this intern doing talking to me, go get coffee, like, you know, you think about that. But he was just so, just, you could tell he really loves what he does. Like his films, he knew this film was gonna mean something. He knew what he was trying to tell the world. And like, he just treated everybody like nobody was this or this. It was like, everybody was here. Honestly, Mario Van Peebles, a genius. This story is gonna be amazing, guys. And his other movie and other films, uh, New Jack City, guys, I got to watch that amazing guys always a purpose behind his stories guys he's really about inclusion really about diversity um our set is very diverse <laughs> i will tell you that honestly to wrap this video up guys a lot of stuff will never happen if you don't put yourself out there if you don't put that first that foot forward and and you know stand on business for real a lot of stuff not gonna happen 
Y'all need to make sure y'all are subscribed, okay? Make sure that notification bell is hit, guys. Because I told you, we're keeping it executive all year long, guys. And this is only day three of our 29-day series, guys. We're leading up into the release of Outlaw Posse, guys, on March 1st. And best believe y'all are getting an episode of me going to the premiere, guys. But as usual, I'm always going to end it on this. Without God, a lot of things would not be possible. Pretty much everything wouldn't be possible, honestly, without God. So if you're alive today, it's another opportunity for you to get yourself together and talk to God. Come as you are. Don't try to change yourself before coming to God because he just wants to know you. The change and everything else will come as you go. But y'all, give your lives to God because he loves you. He cares for you. Jesus cares for you. He died on that cross for you. So if you're alive today, it's another opportunity for you to get together. Don't miss out on Jesus. Because Jesus does not want to miss out on you. And as always, my beautiful, wonderful executive board, keep it executive. Peace.